Hi, welcome to One More Today. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our exploring uh, the concepts, or I call it the pearl of thoughts or wisdom passed from generations of scholars, a summary of strategies um, that could put you to advantage in a wartime. So last time we talked about and it's about while your enemy are dealing with fire outputting emergency, right? That's their weak moment. And that's the time, that's the signal for you to go out and attack and rob them. So I translate it as plunder. Plunder is normally associated with your enemy on fire, right? And then go after them. Okay, today is another uh, strategy from the 36th stratagem uh, about guan men zhu, zhu zai. Uh, guan men zhu zai. Oh, even for Chinese, it's hard to say. You see here is curled tongue. This is flat tongue. Zai. I cannot pronounce as zhu zai. have to be zhu zai. OK, anyways, uh, it's not about pronunciation. It's about meaning making. OK, we have guan men zhu zai. And Guanmen, you can see they share this door frame. That's Chinese door depiction. It's two panel doors. And the reason why we have this top portion of that, my theorization, is um, the door panels at your eye level, like basically your upper torso level. These panels are more decorative because it's close to your eye level. You can see it. So all the you know efforts, resources, you know money devoted to this visible part. Well, the below your eye level, <laughs> the, the the leg level, like you are not going to kneel down and look at the patterns on there, right? So it's unnoticeable, less noticeable. So it's like we don't need to place resources on that to carve that part out. Even though some some doors do decorate the full panel out. Um, you know, with extra money, I guess, but with limited, the top portion is more decorated. That's my theory, okay? Two panel doors, that's our door representation. Now, we have a guan men. This guan means latch on, like latch the door so that it's, it's closed firmly. You cannot open it from the outside. And even from the inside to open it, you have to unlatch it, like pretty complicated latching. So this is a latching system. Back then, I don't know how to use it. It looks pretty fun. <laughs> um, so um, there are uh, sort of door latches that I've seen before. It's like um, two holders on the wall and you have a horizontal thing going through, right? That's one latch and you can place as many latches as you want, but it, it, it kind of inconvenience you as well if you put too many latches. Um, but that's some latching system depicted over there. And with that under the door, actually behind and inside the door, that's a visual representation of shut, shut the door. I mean, contemporary life is so much easier, right? We have our door locks and we even have some contemporary device to help you shut, shut the door, secure your home, right? Um, <laughs> Ancient ones, they have their uh, their own way to shut the door uh, without the, the key and the lock device, okay? So um, now shut the door and then to catch the thief. So yesterday we talked about the thief. Well, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, we talked about the thief. The thief, okay, I translated thief because thief was a contemporary understanding of somebody who steal your money. But in ancient times, the thief are actually means the lawbreakers be because, um, okay, this eyeball plus the two dangling legs beneath it and this knife symbol together, they means rule setting or human society rules. Uh, because uh, there, there are two interpretations. Okay, one is scholar interpretation. Um, this eyeball, you can look at it as an eyeball, but you can also look at it as 
seashell. And the seashell was two dangling outside. That was the, the soft body of this, you know, the, the, the animal living inside the seashell. That's the, you know, the signal of there are something inside the seashell. And the seashell was used as a currency back in ancient times, right? Because it's e small, easy to carry, blah, 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 all kinds of uh, benefits of having seashell as a currency. Um, and then we have this knife symbol means cutting, means distributing, right? Distributing in a fair way of the seashells, the, the money, the currency. So that's the rule of the market almost like, right? Uh, you have a fair distribution of resources, of money. Um, that's the rule, basic rule of how to run a society, right? So that's the rule setting. You basically take in how you contribute to it, right? You're rewarded by your contribution. So basically that's probably the fair rule. Um, but somebody here come up with a weaponry. So this is a complicated, pointy visual representation of weaponry. So somebody use their muscle power and also they have, they're equipped with weapons come in to break the rule. Like they don't want to go through hard labor to harvest, to grow their plant. It took year long effort, right? They don't want to do that. They want to rob it from people. So that rule breaking was captured by this frame and i mean money probably is the easier easiest target to to go for so eventually it becomes specialized out, out specialized lawbreakers it becomes thief so um that's our contemporary uh, understanding but originally it means outlaws who break the social compact um so in this case, because this is about a war, battlefield uh, strategies. So this thief is from your perspective, your opponent is considered a thief or a lawbreaker. It's breaking your law because you want that piece of land, not them, but they want that piece of land as well, right? Who is the lawbreaker? It's totally from the perspective who is writing this book or who is talking right now. Okay, so. Okay, they is simply your opponent in this context, not see. Zhuo is to catch. Okay, so we have, again, heavy-handed, five-finger hand symbol. That means you're really using force, right? You, you're using, deploying all five fingers on your hand. Okay, so that's that. And the right side is our food symbol. This is a three toes of that food, and this is the arch. So it is a kind of weird abstraction of the food, but from the evolution of the language the icon, we can see, oh, that's how the food eventually was formed. I mean, at the beginning, it's more realistic, and eventually it becomes like this. Probably is it for easier uh, for writing and space saving as well. And then the circle thing on top of that actually is a, a kneecap. So kneecap apparently on top of one of the toes doesn't make sense. But remember, this is abstraction of the language. So things don't have to look exactly and uh, as reality, right? So the food symbol there, and then you're throwing a kneecap. It means somebody who is walking because the food by itself, it means standing still. You just have the structure of walking. You haven't walked yet. So that's standing still. Throw a kneecap in. Now you have a rotator. <laughs> like you can start to walk. So that's the walking. Um, so we have the hand and we have the walking capture. Why? My understanding is somebody who tried to walk away, right? And then you use your hand to, to capture that. So that becomes the capture. So um, I guess the hand in this case is more powerful, like out um, power this food symbol, who is um, the more, uh, you know, uh, either it's a lawbreaker or somebody who tried to escape, but this is more authority figure. So try to capture that. Okay, so shut the door and catch the thief. Can you kind of imagine what situation is that? This is applied or was applied um, in the situation when your enemy is 
like you know the information, the war information, the spying. Okay, some days later, we're going to talk about spying. That's a big, big deal um, to win the war. So after spying, you gather information about your enemy. You kind of have a good gauge on how fearful or how uh, well equipped or manpower um, is your enemy, is the thief. In a case of you definitely can overpower them or outnumber them in that situation. Don't waste your time. Just shut the door, like cage them in and capture them. That's the best approach. When you're sure you were dominant in this way, you're, I mean, in this um, battle situation, there's no way they can win you because you absolutely outnumber them. So now I translate as in close and somehow <laughs> I come up with the idea of illustrated this enclosure strategy by the goal game. And this is the basic, like the number one thing to know about a goal is, okay, one, you have this two opponents represented as a black and a white stones. So the, 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 the situation to enclose them is the stone, your enemy, okay, regardless, black one as the thief, right? You try to capture that. The enclose is you have to place all four stones around it because um, stones can only stay in the intersection of horizontal and vertical lines. So that's your spot. So when the, the stone take one spot, you can only take it out, like a capture it by surrounding it on all four positions around it, right? So when you have the three in the situation, so then that's the decision up to the Blackstone, um, whether to save themselves by placing one more stone here so that it takes you like three more steps to enclose them or to give it up so that they can use their limited resources toward occupying some other field. So go game is about occupying as much field as possible on there, right? So once you place this, this is a full enclosure. So four sides of the Blackstone are taken by the white one. So now this black stone was taken out and you occupy successfully this one eye, they call it your eye, uh, one spot on this field. So that's the action of enclosure. And guan men zhuo zhi is what we're talking about and well illustrated by this gold move. Okay, catching to the currency of thinking by one more today with Sophie. See you another day.